Good evening. evening. Welcome to our Lord's house. Today we celebrate All Saints Day, where we remember those who have gone ahead of us into glory, and we also thank God for bringing them into glory. Because it's All Saints Day, our biblical pair that we're focusing on today is going to be humiliation and exaltation. We're We're going to talk about the difference between the state of God's people here in this world and the glorious state that they're in now, being with God. We'll begin our worship with our first hymn, hymn 880, for all the saints. God's blessings on your worship tonight.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together into one holy church, the body of Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow the example of your blessed saints in lives of faith and willing service, and with them at last inherit the inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Revelation 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. First John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. You'll be seated for the next hymn.
Do caterpillars know that they're actually butterflies? They look more like worms, so do they kind of just assume that they pretty much are worms? Like when they see a butterfly going by, do they look at it and think, well, that's what I am, I'm just not there yet? Or do they just crawl through life with no idea that they're going to fly one day? And when they see their fellow caterpillar enter into its chrysalis, do they mourn the loss of their friend? When that friend caterpillar comes out of the chrysalis as a butterfly, do they recognize that as their friend? Do they feel joy over the new form that their friend has now taken? And when caterpillars feel inside themselves that their time has come, do you think they're afraid to enter into the chrysalis? As parts of them dissolve into goop, is that just taken to be the end of them? When they then come out of the chrysalis as a butterfly, do they still think of themselves as being a caterpillar? Do they miss being a caterpillar? Ever wish they could go back to those days? I kind of think that it would be a lot easier to be a caterpillar if the whole time you knew you were really a butterfly and that one day you would be a butterfly. But I don't know what caterpillars and butterflies think. They probably don't think much of anything. They're, they're caterpillars, they're butterflies. What about you? What do you think? Not about caterpillars and butterflies. What do you think about yourself as a child of God? Because much like caterpillars and butterflies, God's children have two stages, two states that they go through. The state of humiliation that we're in right now and the state of exaltation that we'll be in someday in glory. Right now, it is a lowly life that we live, isn't it? One that's marked by suffering and marred by sin. So do we just kind of crawl through life as if this is all there is? Do we crawl through life as if this is all we are? Do we lose sight of the fact that God has made us for far more than this earthly life could ever give us? Isn't it a shame when we forget what we really are as God's children? Isn't it a shame when we forget what we will be as God's exalted children? And when we see a fellow child of God, a brother or sister in the faith, leaving behind the caterpillar stage, leaving behind this state of humiliation, entering into that tomb, entering into the chrysalis. Certainly we mourn, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. But isn't it a shame when we lose sight of the new form they are taking, the new state they are entering into? Do we recognize what they've become? Still, they're a child of God, but one that's traded in humiliation for exaltation, one that's traded in lowliness for glory. They're not earthbound anymore, but their soul has already flown to heaven where it's at perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect rest. And one day even the body is going to be raised to be perfect and glorious. They'll be what God always meant for them to be as God's children. And when we feel inside ourselves that our time is coming, are we afraid to enter that chrysalis, that tomb? As we know that death and decay and dissolving is what lies in front of us, is that just taken to be the end of us? Isn't it a shame? when we lose sight of the new form we're about to take, 
the new state we're about to be entering? Do we recognize what we're about to become? Still a child of God, but one that's traded humiliation for exaltation, one that's traded lowliness for glory. We won't be earthbound anymore. Our souls will have flown to heaven where we will be at perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect rest. And one day even our bodies will be raised to be perfect and glorious. We will be one day what God has always meant for us to be as his children. And yes, there's a lot about that that we don't know yet about how that's going to be. There's a lot that we don't know right now about, wh- about what we will be like then. But we know that when we are in that state, that when we are in that exaltation, we are not going to want to be back here in this time of lowliness, in this time of humiliation. We won't miss this stage. And even though we don't know everything about it, already now we do know what caterpillars might not know. And I kind of think it can make it a lot easier for us as we go through this time of humiliation right now. When we remember what we really are, God's children. And when we remember what we will be, God's exalted children. And how do we know that? How do we know about these two states, the humiliation and the exaltation? How do we know that there is exaltation coming and that this humiliation right now isn't just all there is? How do we know that we're children of God in the first place? We look to our brother Jesus, the only begotten Son of God himself. Jesus is the one, the Son of God, who made us to be sons of God and daughters of God by connecting us to himself by faith. Jesus is the one who has forged for us that father-son, father-daughter relationship with God so that we are his dearly loved children. And it's Jesus, the Son of God, who's shown us what these states are that we go through as God's children. Think of Jesus' humiliation. Even though he was the eternal Son of God with all power, glory, and majesty, he set that aside to live our lowly life for us, to suffer our lowly sufferings for us, to die our lowly death for us. He was the Son of God the whole time, even when he didn't look like it. And through everything Jesus accomplished during his time of humiliation, living and suffering and dying for us, we know that we are God's loved and forgiven children even when we don't look like it, even as we're in our state of humiliation. Now think of Jesus' exaltation. Because Jesus is certainly not in that humbled state anymore. He he rose. He emerged from his tomb as from a chrysalis with all the power, glory, and majesty that had been his the whole time. He showed that he had been the Son of God, the whole time. And he showed, in his exaltation, he showed the glory that he has already begun to share with so many other children of God as he has brought them into exaltation with him. The same glory that he will one day share with us as God's children as he brings us into exaltation with him. With Jesus, it's like we get our life cycle as God's children illustrated out for us ahead of time and fully guaranteed. The one who humbled himself for us is the one who brings us through our time of humiliation now. The one who is exalted for us is the one who will bring us into exaltation with him. 
And that fills our lowly years here with anticipation for the glorious eternity to follow. It makes us view our graves and our loved ones' graves as nothing more than a chrysalis from which we'll emerge one day with far more beauty and grace than we've ever known. It makes us see ourselves as what we really are. And even though we don't know all the details yet, as what we will really be. Something better than a butterfly, a child of God. There is nothing more, nothing better that you could ever hope to be than a child of God. And one day, we'll all get to experience fully just everything that it means to be a child of God. We read again from 1 John. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Please stand. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. With grateful hearts, Lord, we remember you this day. that great cloud of witnesses whose living trust in you, recorded in your word, becomes an example for us to imitate and follow. With grateful hearts, Lord, we remember before you this day. the reformers and confessors who faced the terror of church and empire, but stood firm in your truth because they were moved by grace, empowered by faith, and guided by scripture. With grateful hearts, Lord, your faithful followers of every age, among them our parents and grandparents, and our mentors and models, whom your spirit called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified to be your holy church, and by whose faithful words and deeds the gospel of your grace arrived also to us. With grateful hearts, Lord, those we have known who endured uncommon handicaps, chronic illnesses, and severe hardships, 
yet followed you in simple faith and lived their lives with patience and persistence. With grateful hearts, Lord, we remember before you this day our own loved ones whose memories still burn within our hearts, whom you have called in your good time from their labors in life to that life which knows no end. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Empower us, Lord, to carry on the work you gave to your people of the past, trusting your Son, holding to your word, confessing your truth, loving the lost, reaching out with your love, until you call us too, by your great grace in Jesus Christ, to join them where memories are swallowed up in everlasting joy. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in blessing his saints of the past has given us assurance and hope that following their example, we may run the race marked out for us and receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Once again, a good evening to everyone and great to worship with you tonight. Join us next weekend for worship as the biblical pair that we focus on is darkness and light. Darkness and light. Have a good night and God bless.